Hello and welcome again. This is Robert Shine, Managing Director and Partner of Blanky Shine Wealth Management. Today is May 26th. It's a Thursday of 2022, and this is our market insights and observations. What we're going to talk about today is markets are rebounding, and we got a lot of relief. We saw sort of the 10-year Treasury of the last uh, few trading sessions back back off from the 320 high that we saw earlier this year. Again, if you go back even a year ago, uh, I talked about this, uh, which was the Fed Funds danger zone. And at the time I was referring to Top Gun premiere uh, over 4th of July at that time. And because uh, of COVID, Top Gun was shelved because they wanted the audiences in the theaters to see the actual premiere. So that's been delayed by a year, but I was referring to the danger zone and it's coming out this weekend. Uh, which is exciting as well. Uh, but it's been uh, referring to the danger zone back then and I was making the analogy as to what we were watching back then and it's actually still playing out right now as to why markets are moving and they've been so extremely volatile in the last seven, eight months as a result. And that was the 10-year treasury. Back then we were at the 170 mark for the 10-year treasury. Today we're at the two, uh, the 275 mark, but we were all the way up to the 320 mark, a little bit higher uh, that we saw in the 10-year treasury and why that's important well that was a signal that the bond market was saying and sending to the federal reserve saying you're woefully extremely behind the curve and that short-term interest rates have to go higher on the, the front end of the curve and the bond market was taking care of the work that the federal reserve actually um, hasn't and they they were delayed back then to actually get on board and raise interest rates because we are super accommodative levels and that was overheating uh, a lot of places, which was the result of inflation that we're seeing on our energy, at our grocery stores, our kitchen table, everything. And now it's, uh, the, the anchoring effects of inflation are now into wages. And that's what's ultimately impacting the stock market and the struggle that we're seeing year to date play out. And in fact, one of the research pieces that I want to point out today, I put on the board for us to talk about, is also why the equity markets are down year to date. And historically speaking, if we look at the midterm election years that we are after the first term of a president uh, that we saw, we looked at the sample set of the midterms. This is a piece brought, brought to us by Strategist. And they said, hey, listen, well, how is the S&P performance when we go back to uh, all the midterm years? Uh, we're taking out 2008 because we had a significant the great financial crisis at that, that time. So the, the, the history doesn't actually match up or align. But history doesn't repeat itself. It always sort of rhymes. And so we're not predicting what the market looks like going forward. But this is also a good gauge as to what to expect. And if we look at year to date, how this market has performed by way of the three indices, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P. The S&P is a pretty good gauge as to if we match it up to what we saw back in those the sample set that we're showing. In fact, what the research shows is we start off in January and we go all the way through the summertime where we make lows and we have lower lows. So yes, there could still be lower lows. Obviously, we're in the middle of a bounce right now. We could see the bounce statistically speaking between now and 4th of July, uh, sort of as a relief rally in a bear market. And a bear market, remember, is defined by a 20% down. We have that by the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. They've all closed earlier this year down. Now, why would this play out like this, where the market goes to lower lows? Because more uncertainty right now. If you even think about all the stuff that we have, uh, it's all playing into it. But we could see September, October, could be even August. No one really knows. But back then, uh, if you look at this sample set, it all basically starts turning around right around the midterm elections. Now, why that would be? Well, it's because there's certainty. Uh, obviously, this year, uh, we're going to have elections that could play out where we would have divided Congress. Um, you know, and ultimately what that translates into, markets ra rally off of a divided Congress. Because when you have Congress divided, they can't spend our money. In fact, that's our issue right now is there's so much money out there by way of the government, by way of stimulus, so on and so forth, in checks in hands, and that assistance has worked its way into sort of the inflation issue as well. Too many dollars chasing too few goods and services. Again, we're coming out of COVID and as we reopen, we have too few goods and services. There's supply chain issues, disruptions, so on and so forth. So that's what you have. So one of the things that we saw in this particular example is that once we get past or closer to uh, you know summer's end and closer to November, 
the midterm elections will have certainty. Markets love certainty, at least historically speaking, we're off to the races again. And so we've got uh, to work our way through this summer and we'll enjoy this little rally to upgrade portfolios and sort of, you know, uh, do some housekeeping uh, from time to time, some stuff that worked and didn't work and we'll just upgrade to higher quality across the board. That's what this range is for. Uh, but at the same time, we've got that danger zone. The 10-year treasury is really gonna tell the story. Uh, historically speaking. Now, is this deja vu 1970s? The same research is done and brought to you by Strategist, and they show, uh, you know, this is where we are in the red year to date, and the blue is showing the exact performance of the market in 1970s. Now, keep in mind, we had inflation in 1970, we had war, we had wage price controls, we had a uh, end of um, uh, the OPEC embargo, if you will, and we also had the re resignation of Richard Nixon back then. Um, so this is why you can see markets sort of hit lower lows. Uh, it matches up pretty well. The red is where we are this year to date. The blue is 1970s. So is this deja vu all over again? No one is to really know. But at the end of the day, uh, we look towards sort of what drives markets long term and its longer term view of earnings and earnings are still strong corporations are still going to continue to grind out on top line they're there on the bottom line they're going to continue to do what's in the best interest of shareholders and if that's reduction in workforces if we you know basically laying off people we're seeing that in the a lot of the tech plays if you will if we're reading the wall street journal and the publications every day and that seems to be the tide that's turning remember corporations will do what they need to do right, in the shareholder's best interest to preserve and protect the margins or the bottom lines. And so we could see this equilibrium play out later this year where the tight labor market becomes a little bit easier because corporations go from a hiring and talent war to sort of easing off and laying off. And so that will help balance sheets, that'll help earnings, that'll help operational margins as well. Uh, but it takes some time to get there, but we could see some certainty with regards to as we get closer to the midterm elections. Now, for Memorial Day, thank you for all of those who served and those families that have supported, um, you know, our thoughts and prayers with those that are still doing that today. But we're truly grateful for those who've done it in the past to Blakey Shine Wealth Management. Thank you. And from the bottom of our hearts, enjoy the Memorial Day weekend and everyone be healthy and safe. Thanks for watching.